Good day, folks. Today we will show you all the moments when Pawn Stars lost thousands of dollars on deals. Picasso's La Celestine etching. Picasso is a legend when it comes to arts, and his works could go for hundreds of thousands of dollars. When this guy came into the pawn shop, he brought an original Pablo Picasso etching entitled La Celestine. Rick is definitely interested in the piece, since it's from the most iconic painter in history, but he had to make sure that it's legit, so he and the guy who brought it in went to the art gallery of the expert to get the etching appraised and checked. It looks legit, but there's, there, there's a chance that it could be fake. And, right. um... Are you, are you busy right now? Actually, no. Okay, do you mind if we bring it up to my buddy's art gallery? He'll the art expert examined the piece, and he told them the good news that they wanted to hear. The piece is legit, but the bad news is because it isn't signed, the value should go down. The expert appraised it for 2,000 to 3,000 bucks. The guy's family bought it for 9,000 bucks in the year 2006. Sadly, the value of the artwork depreciated throughout the years. He accepted Rick's offer, which is 1,500, but the real loser in the end is still Rick because he thought he'll own the holy grail. But even he lost a couple more bucks because the etching turns out to be not as valuable as he expected it to be. For this piece, you're looking somewhere in the two to three thousand dollar range. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. I think his family paid nine. Yeah. Yeah. Tortoise Shell Guitar. This guy walked into the gold and silver pawn shop hoping to sell a tortoise shell guitar. The catch is that selling it after the 1970s will make you a criminal. Rick had to make sure he didn't get himself into any problems since, after all, business is business. Rick is highly interested in purchasing the guitar because you don't come across something like that every day. Hey, how can I help you? I have this guitar here and I wasn't sure whether or not I could legally sell it. Yeah, I've never had anyone ask me if it's legal to sell their guitar. When Rick called in the expert to check on the instrument, all smiles disappeared when they learned that owning it is the only legal option, but selling it would result in a significant risk of incarceration. Ten foot pole. There's people that have done ten months of in-house arrest and paid like 20 grand in fines for selling this stuff illegally. Not Napoleon Letter. This guy is a huge fan of Napoleon and he came into the pawn shop with an item that caught Corey's attention. The guy brought a letter with Napoleon's actual signature on it. The best part of it is it looks completely legit because of the seal and the paperwork that proves its authenticity. When Corey examined the piece, he's a hundred percent sold already. He paid the guy two thousand bucks as they closed the deal. Mm-hmm. Okay, it seems like it's from a pretty legit company. What do you want for it? 2000 2000 All right, sweet, man. I'll meet you right over there. Thank you. Corey immediately flexes his winning purchase to the entire squad, but Rick knows that he needs to be sure before they sell it to the shop because Corey purchased it without getting an expert's opinion, so he told him that he should get it checked out first. Corey agreed, and when he met the expert, he told him that what he bought is just a replica and it's worthless. He came back to the office and faced Rick and the old man with so much humiliation that all he has left left to do is to throw the fake Napoleon letter in the trash. That's in the military museum just outside of Paris. So what we've got here is very clearly a replica of a very important document. <clears throat> Ronald Dunbar Grammy Award. This guy came into the pawn shop to try and sell this one-of-a-kind item, something that's only given to talented musicians in the industry, and that is a Grammy Award. Usually when someone comes into the shop, Rick asks them what is the item they're trying to sell, but this time Rick doesn't have to ask because he immediately recognized what it is. Rick agreed to buy it for $2,350, and it was a tough negotiation landing that amount. 23. 25. 23. We're at 25. 23. 50. 23.50, all right. <laughs> it turns out the guy came back with another set of items he wanted to sell to the pawn shop, but this time, Corey is a little more cautious with dealing with him, because it turns out the Grammy award that Rick purchased is illegal to sell publicly. That's 2,350 bucks down the drain. So, this guy came in a while ago and sold my dad a Grammy award, which we later found out we weren't allowed to sell. So I gotta proceed very carefully here. Gibson Mandolin. Chumley got a little confident when he bought a Gibson mandolin without consulting with an expert. Mark said that with the condition it's in, it should be worth around three grand, but Chum closed the deal with 1,500. <laughs> Oh, 
Thank you. When Chum went to the musical instrument expert, he checked everything that needs to be checked, and it turns out it's a total fake. Chum Lee just lost 1500 bucks for some piece of plastic. Yeah. This is fake as hell, man. I just paid $1,500 for that. Ouch. Bob Dylan's autograph. Rick purchased a Bob Dylan self-portrait album for James, and because the condition is fine but not that pristine, he bought it for 50 bucks. But we know Rick, he knows how to double his money, so he assigned Chum for a huge task. Rick knows that Bob Dylan is on tour in Vegas, and he wants Chum Lee to find Bob Dylan and make him sign the record so that the item could bring a lot more profit to the shop. Bob Dylan's in town for a concert. I want you to bring this album to him and have him sign it. All right. Excuse me, you guys seen Bob Dylan? Chum Lee immediately looked for Bob Dylan all over town, and at last, he found him walking around the street. He asked for his autograph, and mission successful. But when he went back to the pawn shop, it was revealed that he committed the biggest mistake of his life, because Chum Lee asked Bob Dylan to write Chum Lee on the record. Well, that's, uh, that's I got lucky. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Oh. Dude, Anything else you want me to say? Can you just make it out to Chum Lee, whatever you want to do. Okay. Rick said that now the record is worthless and that Chumley might as well just keep it. No one's gonna wanna buy an album off me signed to Chumley. Maybe another Chumley will. There's not that many other Chumleys in the world. Silent Scope 2. Chumley's expertise are comics and video games, so he went to check out this vintage video game called Silent Scope 2 on BJ's place. Chumley is confident that he'll easily ace the deal all by himself. He tested the video game, and when he's already convinced that all's well, they negotiated and agreed on a price of 700 bucks. So where did you get this? I actually ordered it while I was uh, overseas in Afghanistan for a year to be waiting for me when I got back. What, are you some kind of sniper in real life? When Chum Lee came back to the pawn shop, he's so confident that he made the winning purchase of the day. But when Rick asked Corey how much they could sell the video game for, he said that they could sell it for 700 bucks on a good day. Rick is madly disappointed with Chum Lee, and Old Man even told Chum Lee to use Skype whenever he's going to close a deal alone. Can I have my phone back? A lot of good it does you. Now I'm going to the bathroom, guys. This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching. Make sure to comment, hit that like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell for more videos like this, and share this video with your family and your friends. See you soon.